Hello again and welcome to the Comics Online Podcast, Season 15, Episode 43. And I got it right this time. This is Episode 43, Part 1. And Part 1 is really Troy Show. Troy, tell them all about it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Flashback Comics and Games here in Woodbridge, Virginia for the ComicsOnline.com podcast, Season 15, Episode 43. I got it right the first time, too. How about that? So, on this part of the show, Kevin and I, assisted by the lovely Kayla. Hi, it's me. Kayla is going to assist us as we talk about our top five picks. We have each of us picked out five of the awesome comics from this week's new releases, and we're going to tell you a little bit about those things. And I have a plus one to go with my top five, nice. which we do on occasion. So, okay. like bonus features on a DVD, but you don't have to sit through the credits for this one. I've got some pluses as well because I got it. I got to educate you on what's coming out this week, so uh, so you know. S- some of your pluses, Kevin, cannot be talked about in polite company. This is true. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Anyhow, so are we going to start with mine or yours? Uh, I just don't know. All right, we'll start with mine. Okay. All right, so, uh, hey, Justice League Gods and Monsters number one Superman. Now, last week we had Gods and Monsters number one of Batman. Yes, we did. And here we've got the Superman one. And this cover I like particularly because it uh, conspicuously shows the uh, the Hyatt in San Diego. You know? <laughs> And and I and it's it's been two weeks and I already miss San Diego and of course Comic Con, um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, Gods and Monsters. Check out Gods and Monsters. I, I believe it's already out on DVD or it's coming out next week. Anyway, check that out. It's uh, it's the new direct to video thing, and this is of course the. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the adaptation, but this is within that same universe. Yeah. Uh, did you actually get to read the uh, Batman? Yet? I, I didn't yet. What? Well, tell me about it. Uh, well. Uh, it focuses very heavily on uh, the character Kurt Langstrom, also known as Man Bat. Nice. So it's <clears throat> not an Elseworlds Batman, but really a different character in the Batman role, if okay. you will. Uh, I see General Zod on the cover of the Superman issue, and I'm thinking right. to myself that General Zod will be cast in the Superman role in this particular issue. Uh, let's see how they tie all this stuff together. But the first issue was actually quite good. Uh, Kevin hasn't read it here yet, but if you come into Flashback Comics and pick your copy up, you probably get it read before he does. It, that it takes might him, be true. It takes him a really long time to get through the 200 comics a month that he collects. Well, it's it's I'm being force fed by by Troy, you see, and you know, uh, said with love. Yeah, said with love. Anyhow, uh, beyond that, we've got we've got Copperhead uh, number nine already. Copperhead uh, Jay Farber uh, is just continuing to kill it. I I love it. I don't have anything different to say about it this week. Um, just uh, if you haven't already started. Get on Copperhead. It is fantastic. Uh, the the art is is wonderful as well. Show him that interior art. Jay Faber is telling a really awesome story that he moves along. Uh, this the story is not stalling. We're going very quickly from arc to arc. Uh, this to be in the ninth issue now. We are up to our necks in uh, a kidnapping gone horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. Uh, yeah. uh, we have uh, clashing alien cultures uh, set in this frontier on an alien planet. Uh, it's it's like a dirty western set in space. We've said that before many times, but if you missed it the first time we said it, or even the first 50 times we said it, there's 51. Dirty western set in space. Much like other dirty westerns set in space, uh, but this one you, has you aliens. Can't, I'm going to keep this because you can't ca- keep this guy from me. <laughs> Troy David. Oh, Kevin. Uh, so the only Marvel comic, my third one for this week, the only Marvel comic that I am I am reading that is not a part of Secret Wars or Battle World or both or neither. No, both. Anyway, <laughs> the only one that is uh, that is set in in the uh, the regular six one six universe, as far as I know. I mean, this one might prove me different, but uh, is is Shield? Uh, the Spider Man Spiral story arc. The Spider-Man Spire... Yes, what Troy said. Uh, 16.1, 17.1, 18.1, 19.1. Oh, and this is rolling right out of that? Uh, no, no, but I'm just pointing out that also the spiral arc is not in Because World. Troy force-feeds me. He's right that I want to read this, but I'm like, no, all I want is S.H.I.E.L.D., nothing else. And he's like, no, you don't, and he puts it in my box. And then Kevin buys it. Yeah, that's true. And he takes it home, and, and it eventually gets read. Eventually. And by the time he reads it, it's come out in trade paperback form already. <laughs> that, that might be the truth. Has been optioned for a film. 
Uh, Ooh, that'd and, be uh, good. <laughs> Uh, and then, meanwhile, I have moved right along to uh, you know whatever issue is most current. Twenty four issues later, and if you haven't already uh, watched our uh, Agents of Shield uh, coverage from San Diego Comic Con, that's because you're not psychic because I haven't uploaded it yet. But when I do, because my computer is <laughs> down, my computer's been in the shop. It's crazy. It was bad timing, but anyway, once that's fixed, then I'm going to have that up, and you are going to love it. I've got uh, I'm seeing a bunch of Mockingbird in here, and you're. You're gonna you're gonna love the that interview. Uh, for um, for yeah, fans they're, they're, well, for fans of the show that are less familiar with the comics, the <laughs> you okay there? Oh yeah. The character Agent Morse is Bobby Morse, aka Mockingbird, uh, who was once married to Hawkeye of the Avengers. They were on the Avengers West Coast together. Uh, the comic has adapted the television series characters into comic form while simultaneously bringing in the characters like Agent Morse, uh, who already have comic incarnations. We've seen Daisy Johnson, yeah. a.k.a. Sky, a.k.a. Quake, from Secret Wars and Secret Warriors. Yeah. Uh, and so we bring in... Agent Coulson and Agent May and Fitzsimmons and give them comic versions and then bring the comic versions of the characters that have been on the show and use their comic incarnation. So Agent Morse is actually in her costume as Mockingbird. She right. doesn't have a costume in the show. Right. So that's where you're confused if you're confused. And I've just straightened you out. Thanks, Troy. You're quite welcome. Yeah. Uh, moving to your next choice... Uh my next choice, my fourth choice for this week, Modoc Assassin number three. Now, fans of like uh, fans of humor books. If you like the old uh, John Byrne She-Hulk, if you like uh, practically any version of Deadpool, you will enjoy Modoc Assassin. And of course, this is one of our uh, Secret Wars Battle World books, and uh, it's it's it's. It's a comedy. You'll enjoy it. It's yeah, uh, it's hilarious. it's an interesting, funny take on Modoc. I personally would actually like to see Modoc go back to his much more serious roots. Uh, fans of the old uh, Captain America series in Tales of Suspense remember that Modoc. Sure. He's much more frightful. Uh, his appearance in uh, Submariner, uh, his quest for the Cosmic Cube. He was, in fact, in charge of AIM for a very long time. Um, and the character was not always ridiculous and ludicrous. The ludicrosity in Modoc Assassin, however, is is executed quite well, uh, much better than, say, the Iron Man cartoon from the 1990s. Well, really, just... everything is executed quite well, because this is Modoc Assassin. Ludicrosity, peopleosity, all of those things have been executed by Modoc. It's it's a bloodbath in here, and it's hilarious. Yes, and why is this silly character called Modoc? Because it's an acronym for Mental Organism Designed Only for Killing. Yeah. So anyway, uh, my, my, my next one, you know... Who doesn't love the uh, the old 90s X-Men, you know? And here we've got uh, Rogue on the cover, um, you know, with her with her then bow. Uh, what's that guy's name? Stupid Gambit. Gambit. God, Remy LeBeau. Gambit. Come on. He he was he was a pretty bad character back in the day. He he eventually got better, but um, but anyway, <laughs> X Men '92 is also uh, one of the Battle World um, uh, regions. Yes, uh, yeah. domains. Domains. There and, you go. And you know what, Kevin? Yes, if sir. If you hadn't rejected my generous invitation to come to the flashback reading discussion group last night, that was Monday night, incidentally, <sighs> last Monday of the month, every month. I forgot all about. It. I was going to come over here. And uh, we talked, actually, about X-Men 92, issue number one. Everyone read it, and we had a roundtable discussion, and we I... evaluated it, critiqued it. Uh, and uh, next month, uh, the month of August, the last Monday of the month, we will have uh, a roundtable discussion, probably focused on either the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl or the Boom the Boombox series, uh, Lumberjanes. Okay. Um, so I, I wish I'd have been here. I mean, because, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the little girl is out of town. Um, this week, and so that you know that was uh, it would have been easier. But anyhow, I just wanted as my plus ones, and I'm just going to throw these up in quick succession. Uh -huh. uh, the other Secret Wars stuff coming out this week, 1602. Also, Age of Ultron versus Marvel Zombies. She's running out of hands here, Kev. Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars. 
and Thor's number one. So that, those are those are the remainder. As far as I know, those are those are all the rest of the uh, the Secret Wars titles for for this week. It seems like there's about six or seven per week. Um, we're kind of sorry, or perhaps uh, sorry, not sorry. Not really in that region somewhere. But um, uh, like I say, most of them are really good. Most of them are, are worth it. Um, but if you're uh, you know if you're not on a Troy or a Kevin budget when it comes to uh, comics, then th- then at least Let's not go there. Um, <laughs> then at least uh, read the, the, the ongoing, and uh, I would say the ongoing and Old Man Logan. Those would be my, my choices. If all you're going to read is two books, I would say just the, the, the main Secret Wars and Old Man Logan, and then, of course, branch out from there into your favorites. Now, I, I'm doing this with Secret Wars, and I did it with Convergence. Uh, with Convergence, I read the main title, and I read each of the two-issue crossovers, uh, the two issues of Harley Quinn, the two issues of Nightwing Oracle, Justice League International, etc., uh, looking to see if these were essential reading. Do you need to read this to understand the main story? And for the most part, no, you did not, but they were quite enjoyable all the same. In the case of Secret Wars, however, I am seeing more and more ties to the main story. Story. Stuff is happening in the main book that spills into the individual books. Stuff is happening in the individual books that sets up consequences for the remaining four issues which have not yet been published. That is very true. So there's definitely, again, you might not need to read everything. I'd recommend it because it's a good series overall and I'm having a lot of fun with it. But if your budget doesn't allow for it and you just want to read Master of Kung Fu with Shang-Chi and Ghost Racers, well, okay, pick that up. Guardians of Nowhere, very good read. Squadron Sinister, awesome read. Captain Marvel and the Carol Corps, this book is starting to have an impact that'll be felt later in the book as Carol Danvers dreams of stars that she can't see. Oh, yeah. Um, And no more spoilers from that point, but check that book out. Out. Uh, Captain Britain and the Mighty Defenders. Captain Britain himself, the Union Jack wearing character from the UK, was not seen in this issue. And yet the cast of characters that they did have, awesome. Very well done book. Soraya, I, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correct. Uh, she's a Middle Eastern character. She's actually carrying the Excalibur sword. You might remember in Secret Avengers, she was partnered with uh, Black Knight as she was carrying Black Knight's Ebony Blade. So it didn't further corrupt him, or why? Um, I believe that was her motivation, but we're going to have to go back and reread those things. <laughs> <laughs> Troy's got time like nobody else. I don't know what the... You have time like that. As I say, and if I may paraphrase from The Matrix, how do we ever have time if we do not take time? Thank you to the Merovingian. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. so at some point, I look at my available free time, and I decide. You're be taking more time in the in the near future. Can I yeah. take some of yours and? Do no, you cannot. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what you have to do. You have to prioritize it. You have to make time and sit down and read this stuff. It's true. It's true. So, so Troy, you you're pretty DC heavy this week. I am because DC released a spate of their annuals. First on my hit parade is Deathstroke Annual Number One. On the cover, we see the Man of Steel, Superman, and the Amazon Maid of Might, Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman, as you could see, is spotting the more classic costume, or at least the new 52 incarnation mm-hmm. not the new david meredith finch created costume so yes these Ooh, are that's a good one. Show in continuity that. stories but uh they're not necessarily in chronological sync and they don't need to be in this new iteration of dc comics we're not calling it new 52 anymore however what we are getting is tony s daniel on this book and that makes it amazing yeah um, art is good too I'm, I'm not familiar with bonnie but i'm liking their art uh, Deathstroke is, yeah, the Deathstroke comic has been absolutely gorgeous uh, for the eight, nine issues that it's been running. Yeah. Fantastic. There's a people. Uh, yeah. There's a creature made of people. Spoilers, there's a Look. creature made of people. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can see bodies <clears throat> hanging off of its arms. How cool is that? Yeah. Uh, yes, the Deathstroke Annual continues on the story arc that was in the most recent Deathstroke series. So if you've been reading the book and on the fence about the annuals, pick this up because it advances the story for you. We call him Soylent Megazord. <laughs> Are you ready for my number two? I am. Come on. Okay. Gotham. Gotham by Midnight, ladies and gentlemen. Not to be confused with Gotham by Gaslight. Not to be confused with Gotham by Gaslight. Gotham by Midnight actually 
deals with uh, the night shift element of the Gotham City Police Department. Uh, the ones that deal with the weird kind of x filish cases, cases with a supernatural theme. Nice. Uh, the book was introduced with uh, a member of Internal Affairs coming to investigate why this night shift was allocating resources and manpower and they had to make an accounting for themselves. So here we go. Is that... we got to take the AI officer and we have to lead him through what we really do at night and scare the crap out of him. Oh, Craddock. I thought it was uh, Tetch. Uh, and so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. And now the Gentleman Ghost. Oh. Uh, the Gentleman Ghost, a classic character from before the 52 and now in this current iteration of DC Comics. Again, we're not calling it New 52 anymore. Uh, a reimagined version of the Gentleman Ghost. Now, jumping over to... From Gotham to Burnside, this is topical, <laughs> Batgirl, because Batgirl has moved out of Gotham and moved to Burnside. New creative team on the book since the departure of Gail Simone, and we are seeing a new direction in terms of the tone, the art, the story, Batgirl's motivations, etc. So if you haven't been reading Batgirl from issue 36 to present, uh, which is issue 41, uh, 41 or 42, okay. then uh, you should pick those up. And uh, here is the newest annual Batgirl. Girl Annual number three. Uh, she's been one of the first wave of DC books. And, and which Batgirl oh, is this? Is this Barbara? It's still Barbara, yes. Okay. And uh, she's just moved. Uh, and we have Agent Grayson. Uh, seeing him on the cover tells me that he's going to have to explain to Barbara that I'm really not dead. Uh, I know I faked my death at the end of Forever Evil, and you were probably heartbroken and sad, and I'm sorry to toy with your emotions. I'm sure that's going to happen in here. I won't know until I read it, and that's going to happen very soon. Barbara looks really young in this. Yes. Uh, they are, and the artwork emphasizes a youthfulness for her. Um, like I said, it's it's she been a complete like a change. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the tone intended to like you know, reach a little bit towards a younger reader base. Huh. Um, Don't love that aspect, but whatever. Rock on. Uh, well, you know, if, if they wanted that, you know, they could have just just made it. Uh, what's her name? Stephanie. Uh, they didn't want Stephanie. Yeah. And I wanted Stephanie. All the work that Barbara. Um, yeah, but this one has red hair, and this that's just like really cool. <laughs> yes. All, Fine. All the, F uh, all the work that Gail Simone did to bring us back to Barbara Gordon and make Barbara canny and capable, and so now we have Barbara. She used to be the most capable person around, and now, oh, she's a silly teenager again. Yeah, well, Kayla. But, she, but she's walking. Um, I'm not a teenager. I'm actually an adult. Ooh. Aren't well, you 19? I am. That's a teen. Silly teenager. Okay, first off, I I pay for stuff, okay? <laughs> Girl, uh, you are a teenager. I am not even dealing with you. <laughs> I, Megan, I'm shut up. Still I. With you could cut this part out. You're older than me, like school wise. So, right. so hold up. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> okay. Moving to the next one. Flash. Flash. Okay. This is the latest Flash annual, and on the cover we see Professor Zoom, also known as the Reverse Flash. Um, if you've been reading the story along, again, the annual continues the story from the main series. So if you've been on the fence about picking up annuals, then you should get off the fence and pick the annual up, and wow, there it is. Double-sized book, and show them the interior, because it looks awesome. These look really cool. Nice. Yes, indeed. And so Jensen, Dazzo, Rapmund, and Dollhouse. Fans of the uh, of the show will will be happy to know that, that Zoom will be uh, uh, the, the, vil the main villain for season two of Flash. Indeed. Yeah. So Flash Annual 4, ladies and gentlemen, and my fifth and final pick of my top five is actually from Image Comics. This is the very wonderful heist comic known as The Tithe. Latest issue of The Tithe, this is issue number... Four. Okay, so what we have here is a group of computer hackers doing a Robin Hood rob from the rich, and the rich that they rob from are churches, and they expose these churches, fraudulent corruption and mismanagement of finances, etc. Uh, and there are some allegories here made, you know, some real life uh, allegations without picking a specific church or a specific religious figure head. Um, but if you like that kind of controversial story, if you like a realistic, grounded, and this is very predicated in a Show realistic heist type. Um, yeah, probably, probably yeah. get a little something earlier. 
There you go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, th this one is not bloody violent, because a lot of this is, apparently. Uh, yes, it is. The, the violence has stepped up a little bit. Uh, again, the story has been moving along from the first couple of robberies, the FBI agents investigating, and their, uh, their dynamic relationship. Uh, the one upright agent and the one agent with a bit of a spotty checkered past. Uh, be sure, when you're reading this book, to read the Matt Hawkins essays and the material in the back. Read the letters pages. This yeah. book and is interesting. And, and the ad cover. on the back kind of goes with it as well. Uh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Mr. Robot, if Mr. you haven't Robot. watched that. Maybe we'll talk about that in part two. You never know. So my fifth, my, my plus one, I'm sorry, that was my fifth and final pick, the tithe. My plus one is the Thunder Agents. I love the Thunder Agents. And here we are from IDW, the Thunder Agents 50th. Uh, these characters are created by legendary comic artist Wally Wood, uh, and they were featured in the Tower Comics series, which uh, was bi-monthly, if I remember correctly at the time. Double-sized books, 25-cent cover price they were, when other books were 12 cents, um, which may have impacted their sales negatively, but it was just so good. Shock full of Wally Wood awesomeness. Uh, an interesting mix of characters. They were super agents working for the law enforcement arm of the United Nations, and they had some very interesting villains, all created by Wally Wood. Um, the book has had multiple incarnations since its original introduction. One of my favorites from the 1980s, the Deluxe Comic Series, which unfortunately ran five issues. Okay. Um, DC Comics took a turn at it. Uh, IDW Comics very more recently had a shot at it, and here we are now with the 50th, and and, um, yeah, if, if you've not ever read anything by the Thunder Agents, I strenuously recommend picking this up. Book's a lot of fun. Love the characters. Love the history. Um, love to talk comic history with people. Cool. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, that's our top five picks for, for this week. That's our p part one. Uh, scroll down and, and, and hit the link for part two. And, uh, by the way, uh, we are on a different location, um, so just uh, pay attention to that. We're, we're, we're no longer on Blip TV because they're closing down, but we're, we're moving on over to another YouTube channel there. Okay. All right. We'll see you on part, part two, and we'll see you next week. Yes, indeed. From leaking tall builders to going off like gamma bombs. Switch your internet browser to comicsonline.com.